Today's topic has been creating effective introductions and conclusions for our speeches. In particular, we focused on the functions and the parts of each. First, we discussed introductions. With an effective introduction, it has four functions. First of all, it arouses attention with our audience. Second, it introduces the topic or the purpose of our speech. Third, it motivates our audience to accept our ideas if it's a persuasive speech. And then finally, it previews the main points. In order for an introduction to accomplish these functions, it has three parts. First, it has an attention getter. Secondly, it has a credibility statement. And then third, it contains a thesis or a preview statement. Then we moved on and discussed how to create an effective conclusion. A conclusion has at least four functions. First of all, it alerts our audience that the speech is about to be over. Second, it summarizes our key points. Third, an effective conclusion will always leave our audience with something to think about. And then last of all, a conclusion should provide closure so that our audience knows that the presentation is over. In order to accomplish these functions, the conclusion will have these two parts. First, it will have an alert summary, and then it will also have a closing thought. So ideally, if our speeches have an effective introduction and conclusion, the speech will become not so much a, a simple transference of information, which is easily forgotten, but rather with an effective introduction and conclusion, our speech will become more of a, a learning experience that our audience can hang on to and remember and understand better. So based on those ideas, let's do the following activity. We're go we are going to listen to a sample demonstration speech. And as at the conclusion of the speech, I would like for you to go online and to take the following quiz that'll be based on these multiple choice questions. So in other words, as you listen to the speech, I want you to think about these questions. First, what did the speaker do to gain the audience's attention? Number two, how did the speaker establish credibility? Number three, did the speaker give a thesis statement? Number four, did the speaker preview the main points? Number five, what did the speaker use as an alert slash summary statement? And then finally, number six, what was the speaker's closing thought? Here's the speech. they were all influential. Today, most of us have noticed braids of new it hairstyle. As a member of tr society trying to keep up with all the new trends, I have spent countless hours trying to learn these new and upcoming hairstyles. Today, I'm here to show you just a few different ways you can braid your hair. First, I'm going to start with the one and only classic braid. The classic braid is probably the easiest braid of all of them. You start with the hair in just basically a ponytail. You divide into three even sections of hair. One, two, three. And basically it's the same pattern throughout the whole braid. So you're going to take the outside strand, which is the right in my right hand, cross over the middle. Then you're going to take the other outside hand, strand, cross over the now middle, which was before the right stranded. And then you're going to go right over middle, left over middle, right over middle, and it's pretty simple. Usually boys can actually do this um, braid. Uh, the braid, when you finish the classic braid, you'll tie it with a ponytail. Carrie will now show us what the finished classic braid actually looks like. 
Her hair is really thick, so she has thicker strands of hair throughout the, the brain. Although the classic braid is very simple, it paved the way to more complex braids. Although it's called the French braid, it's not actually French at all. It actually originated from North Africa. Uh, it is called the French braid because France is associated with high living, and so they thought it was a classy, more elegant braid, so that's how that got started. For the French braid, you will start at the crown of the head, and some people can start, you can start up here too, but and also some people put French braids in about the bangs of the, of the hair. But I'm going to start at the crown, just a classic French braid. You're going to split the hair into three pieces. This is more difficult than the classic braid because it has more elements to it. Split the hair into three even sections of the crown. Then you're going to scoop up hair from each side. Combine it with the outer, which is in my right hand, outer strand, cross over the middle, so it's kind of like the classic braid in that way. Also, then you're going to take the other side of hair, combine it with the outside braid, and again cross over the middle. You're going to keep going until you reach the end, and again, I'm going to cross this over. It's just the same pattern throughout. It's a little difficult to learn at first, but I actually kind of taught myself. I used to practice on my Barbies. Um, for the French braid, once you get about to here, you won't have any more strands to hold in from the side. So you're going to have to just finish the whole braid with a classic braid and again tie the hair with a ponytail. Krista has a finished French braid on her hair, which starts up here, as you can tell, at the crown. And as it gets to about here, there's no more hair to pull in from the side, so she has to finish with a classic braid and again ties it at the end with a ponytail. The classic and French braids have been used for a long period of time, but recently a new style of braid has emerged and that is called the fishtail. The fishtail looks very complex and it's difficult and I thought it was going to be difficult before I learned how to do it, but actually once you get it down it's almost as easy as the classic braid. It doesn't have as many um, elements, so to start with the fish braid, fishtail braid, you're going to just start with the hair and a ponytail basically. You're going to split it into two again. And from the right side, you're just going to take a little strip of hair, cross it over the middle, over the right strand, and you can combine it with the other strand of hair in the left hand that I have here. Also, then you're going to take the other side, do the same step, but make sure this is combined the step, the strand that you crossed over, you're going to make sure that it is combined with the left strand that you did. Cross over the newly pulled strand into the other um, strand of hair. It's kind of hard to keep it all together sometimes because it falls out. you got to make sure it's really tight or else it won't stay. So then just keep going down. And you're just going to keep pulling just average sections of hair, almost like an inch thick of hair. Um, throughout the middle. Her hair is kind of easy for this to do because it's so um, thick and easily done. Okay, so basically sometimes you can tie it here, just leave it like that. That's actually kind of a pretty style. But also when you get to the end, you're going to just keep going down, 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 down until you finish with the whole entire fishtail braid and you're going to knot it with a ponytail. Ashley has the fishtail braid. Her hair is a little thinner, so her strands are a little um, skinnier, and her braid is a little loose here just because her hair is so thin that it won't stay into the loop, but that's about it. So the styles may change throughout the years, but braids are here to stay. She gave you, today I gave you a little insight into the numerous braids that can be accomplished. Other, comple other complex braids include the mermaid braid, inside out braid, five strand braid, and many more. Although many braids are very challenging, with a little practice and repetition, you'll be a braiding master. Happy braiding! So now that you have seen the sample demonstration speech about braids, you are ready to answer the multiple, cho the multiple choice questions. Good luck!